So this is the story of Rosie Revere. Who dreamed of becoming a great engineer. I wrote Rosie Revere because when I saw the art from Iggy Peck Architect, there's a scene with a classroom of kids. And as in every group of kids, I thought this is a bunch of kids with interesting stories. And I was particularly intrigued by the little girl, uh, the little blonde girl in the class, because you never see both of her eyes. And I thought, hmm, what's her story? I bet she's very shy, but I bet she's full of ideas and is always paying attention. So I, I wanted to write a story about an engineer, and it sort of evolved into Rosie Revere Engineer. So Iggy made a wonderful sphinx out in the back of the, in his yard. And um, so in Rosie Revere Engineer, you can see that across the parkway. So we learned from that that they are neighbors, in fact. And really observant kids will pick up those kind of details. And it's one of the beautiful things about these books and about the art by David Roberts is his level of detail and the amount of research he puts into his, his art. Nothing in that book is accidental. Who's sleepy, she hid her machines far under the bed where they never go. I studied computer science and also biology in college, and when I left college, I, when I graduated, I uh, worked for a software company for a number of years. I did technical support and also technical writing, and as part of that, I really learned how to be uh, a good editor, because when you're trying to write things that are very complicated, you want to make it very clear and very simple, but interesting. And that is exactly the same process as writing books for kids. She loved kids, the zookeeper frog. She made him a hat with a snake on his head from parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keeps the hat in the way. I love the cheese hat. I love a cheese hat with cheddar cheese spray. I think that's fantastic and it works against pythons. Florida could use this. Really? They have that big python problem. I love the cheese cocker though. And I love that she worked with her great aunt on that. Um, one of the reasons that Rosie the Riveter, basically the character of the great aunt, is Rosie the Riveter, and she's in the story because I wanted to say thank you to all the women who worked during World War II. Uh, my aunt was a Rosie the Riveter. I love that, that they work together, and I love, I love the role of mentorship because it's so incredibly important that when you get the chance, you help other people along, you help younger people or people who are new at a field, because that's, that you can learn a lot from, from people that you're teaching and also they can learn a lot from you. It's very rewarding. So. The sad smile as she looked to the sky. The only thrill left on my list is to fly. I think that the process of discovery is the same for science or for art. For me, when I write a story, it's like taking a problem, uh, for instance, what's going to happen to the characters in my book, and I hold that up and I approach it from all the different angles that I can. But the same is true with science. Whenever you're uh, trying to find, trying to make an invention, the, the process an engineer goes through is one of looking at a problem and taking it from all different angles, and you try things over and over again, and you fail constantly. But it's through failing that sometimes you find what you really need to do. And that's true for writing. When I write a story, I don't get to it in one pass. It's very, very rare that a story is done through the first draft. So every failure I have and every success I have will, will spur on new ideas that I want to pursue. And that's, that is exactly the same process when you're doing science. She handed her notebook to Rosie the beer. The smile at her aunt as it all became clear. Life might have its failures, but this was not it. The only true failure can come if you quit. Will there be other books? I hope so. I think there will be some scientists in that classroom and I think also a paleontologist, which is a terrible word to rhyme. I'm just going to say right there, it's a terrible word to rhyme, but in my mind I'd love to see a kid out there looking for dinosaurs, um, because I think that would be fun. My best advice for kids is to follow the things that interest you. If you're curious about something, find out about it, explore it, discover, and see where that takes you. You never really know where you're going to end up. I did not set out to be a writer. I didn't know until I was 30 that I wanted to be a writer. One day, I realized that I had stories to tell, and had I not followed the path that I had taken, had I not studied biology, had I not studied computer science, had I not read the books that I had read, I wouldn't have had the same, same stories to tell. So follow, follow what interests you, and don't worry about 
where it's going to take you. You, it'll work out. And have fun. Have fun with it. Because when you're writing stories, when you're making inventions, there's no wrong answer. Just do it and enjoy it. And don't worry when something doesn't go right. Learn from it. Laugh it off. Move on. And see where it takes you. It's a great adventure.